Hey there all my fellow party hat friends, Z here, and do I have something truly exciting to show you today. I give you an archery target with a local and global leaderboard. In this video, we're going to be working together step by step through the circuits for showing you the room's best shot and how to upload to the leaderboard so that you can challenge anyone else that plays this game in your room. It's as simple as this. Shoot close and your score will appear. Shoot further, it'll appear again. But shoot even closer, unfortunately your score won't appear on the local leaderboard. There are quite a bit of cool rec room tricks in this project, but I'll help break it down for you so hopefully you too can put this awesome creation in your room. This project can be pretty advanced, so make sure that you have some circuit experience before jumping in and creating this in your own world. Before we get started, some of you may know about toggle buttons. But what you may not know is that toggle buttons can actually be turned on and off by bows. Two of the most important chips that we're going to be using for today's project are the leaderboard set local player stat and a synced float variable. The leaderboard set local player stat chip has an execute function as well as two input variables. The top variable, the channel, allows us to choose which stat we're going to be changing in the leaderboard. The second variable, the value integer, allows us to choose how much we're going to be setting the leaderboard stat for. The synced float chip will be used for our local leaderboard in the room. Notice it has an execute function as well as a float input. The string format chip can be just a little bit tricky, but don't worry, we'll walk through it together. The format at the top of the string format chip allows you to choose where the values beneath it will be placed in the output string. The input values on the string format chip are what will replace the numbers in your format string. These will, in turn, be placed in the output of the string. Let's try this out. If we take the string format chip and input it into the text object, we can display our string format as player, name from the first input value, and distance from the second input value. Alright, enough chit chat, let's get to building. The first circuits we're going to want to get started on this project are the toggle button V2, the toggle button set is pressed chip, and the leaderboard set local player stat chip. Also, don't forget to spawn in a nice leaderboard. Let's go ahead and configure our leaderboard. Select configure and click on your leaderboard. Next, you'll want to make sure stat1 is turned on and label the full name as distance as well as the short name to distance. After you make sure that the stat formatting is selected as an integer, we can go ahead and turn off stat 2 and turn off stat 3. Alright, now back to the chips. The first thing we want to do is turn the button off as soon as we turn it on. Might sound a little funny, but we do this by using the pressed execute function and selecting the toggle button set is pressed as the next chip to be executed. We then choose the toggle button as the target for that chip. This will allow us to press the button and immediately have the button be ready to be pressed again. Next, we're going to set up the global leaderboard stat. We do this by, after the toggle button set is pressed chip is executed, we execute the leaderboard set local player stat chip. After selecting the chip with configure, we're going to change the set mode to set if greater. The reason that we're doing this is so we can always execute the chip and not have to worry about the value being lower. This will allow us to always have a record breaking shot instead of having lower shots be counted on the leaderboard. Now that the global leaderboard chip is being executed when the button is pressed, we need to make sure that this value represents how far away you are from the button. We can do this by using the distance chip as well as the round to integer chip. We'll go ahead and wire this round to integer chip to the value of the leaderboard set local player stat chip. 
Afterward, all we need to do is find the distance from the player who presses the button and the button itself. And there you have it, it's that easy. As soon as we hit the button, our distance to the button will be set on the global leaderboard for this room. Great work following along so far everyone. Now we're going to do the local leaderboard stat. Since we already have the distance chip calculating how far we are from the button, we can use this and a float variable to set the distance to the float variable. The only problem now is every time we execute this chip, we're always going to be setting a new record. We don't want that. We only want to set the record if it's further away than the previous record. So now we're going to get into the logic of things. Our two new chips are going to be the greater than logic statement and the if statement. We're going to wire the greater than into the if statement. And then we're going to check the distance from the player and the button against the distance of your record. Now we're going to move this if statement into a better spot. Once the global leaderboard has been set, we'll do a quick check. Are you further from the button than where the record is? If so, we're going to use this then execute and come down to here to set our new record. We've been working really hard so far, but I think we deserve something to show for it. I know, let's get our text object in. This text object is going to represent our local leaderboard in the room. We can execute this and set the text anytime the top distance is set for a record in the room. Hmm. We're going to need to set this text input to something else. I wonder if we have a chip that would be useful that we learned about before. Ah, the string format chip. Let's go get one of those. Ah! <sighs> oh man, you wouldn't believe what I just had to go through for one of these. Well anyway, now that we have it, let's get it installed. The first thing we're going to want to do is configure this string format chip. Now that we've opened the string format chip with our configuration tool, we want to make sure that we have two values on the input side. We can increase or decrease the number of inputs on the left side of the chip with these two buttons. Let's go ahead and set the input format for our string format chip. In your maker pen, select the wire tool and select the input format option with your wire tool. Now if you open your configuration on your maker pen, you can select the value. This will prompt us to enter the value of what we want to be input in that string. So for this case, we're going to type player followed by the set bracket zero and the set bracket again. This means we're going to use the first input value in our string format chip. Afterwards, we are going to put the distance in. We can do this by doing a colon followed by the set bracket with a one for the next value. After closing the set bracket again, we'll go ahead and put a space and then I'm going to put an M for meters to let us know the value of which the distance is. Go ahead and click done. And now we see that our format is configured correctly. So then we can go ahead and choose our output and see that it says player blank colon blank M. Since we have no values in our input, our zero and one are blank. I know that was a lot of information really quick, so if you need to, pause the video and go back and watch it again. Next what we're going to do is take the output result from our string format and hook it up to the text input on our text object. Alright, we're getting close to the end, so get excited. Lastly, we're going to need two two-string chips. These chips are used to convert a value into a text, so we can use the text as a name. For example. 
the toggle button. If we grab the player and put it into the two string, we can see the last player to touch the button. This two string will be wired to the first input value on our string format chip. Next, we're going to want the distance that the player hit the button from. We still have the distance right here. So let's grab this distance and enter it into the two string down here. From the two string, we'll enter it into the second input value on the string format chip. For those of you who want to play this with friends, you may run into the issue where people are overriding the text from each other. This is because we did not sync the top distance variable. Syncing allows all players to update to the chip together. So, in this case, if I were to get a distance of 1.2 meters, and you were to achieve a distance of 1 meter, this top distance should not update, because I have set the distance to 1.2. Let's go ahead and sync that variable now. Use your maker pen, select configure on the chip, and on the right side, you'll see the synced option. Make sure that this is turned on and orange. If you'd like to change the chip name to make sure that you have a unique chip for this project, go ahead and select this value and type in whatever you would like. I use top distance for this example. And that's all there is to it. Enjoy having fun with your friends, and have a great time battling it out on the leaderboard. Speaking of leaderboard, let's check what my leaderboard says about me right now. Wow, would you look at that? I'm on the top of the leaderboard in my room. Have fun challenging all your friends, and make sure you stay positive, all you party people.